But look, we've got Liam Lawrence on the line. We sorted out with Skype. Liam, thanks for joining us. All right, mate. What are you wearing? Is it is it sunny over there? I've, yeah, I've just been in the shower and got myself ready for this. So I'm just in the <laughs> in the games room on the Xbox on Skype. <laughs> okay, listen. Get everybody up to speed. I've seen you a little bit. We covered the, the Leeds Stoke game a couple of weeks ago. We've bumped into each other a couple of times, mainly at Stoke, um, where you are still going to a lot of games. Tell everybody what you're up to these days. Well, I'm obviously trying to get into the media side of it as, as much as I can. I, I did want to go down the coaching route at the start of it, but while I was waiting for a job at Stoke, I sort of fell into to the media side of it a bit, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. As you know, we've had a few conversations about it, so we'll see what happens this year. You're right, and you're also doing your coaching um, badges. I think you were in with the FAI, weren't you, during the summer? Um, have you finished the A licence, or are you not quite there yet? I've just got one assignment left to do, um, and then I'll be coming back over to, to Cork to, to finish it off next month. So, yeah, it's gone well. Mm. Right, bring us right back to how it came about you becoming involved with the Irish team. Um, it was at Sunderland, um, obviously with Mick McCarthy being there and his his connections and stuff. I was doing well at the time and he, he asked me about my background and, and things like that. And when I said I'd got Irish family and, and stuff, he sort of pointed me in the right direction and sort of gave me a lift up with it. And, you know, it just progressed and went from there. You, I would have to say you settled like snow within that squad. I know you would have known a few of the, the players playing with and against them at a club level, but what were your first thoughts when you when you bounced into the Irish setup? Well, I was obviously nervous, you know, because of the accent and, you know, being born over in, in England, I was nervous to how people would take me, but I was amazed at the time because they were so welcoming and you obviously know the lads very well as well. They it was such a good group that we had there and they made me feel right at home from, from the first minute. So it was uh, it was a pleasure to be there. Mm. I think I've, I've often said this um, about players that do come in that aren't born in Ireland. I think you can quickly tell why they're involved, if they're genuine or not. And I think certainly with the way you were speaking, you, you settled in really well. And we the, the atmosphere that we had amongst that squad um, in the 2010 campaign, it was it was proper, wasn't it? Yeah, it was awesome. It, it just it's it's rare sometimes you'll know yourself when you go into a, a change room or into a club that things gel and and get together that quickly. I mean, we had such a good mix, didn't we, of experience and then young, hungry lads that mm. really wanted to do well. I mean, for me, it was an absolute honour just to be in the same dressing room as some of you. So to get that chance to actually play football alongside you was was a dream come true. Like. Now, we both, it was during Mr. Trapattoni's reign, obviously, where we, we both played, and I got, certainly got all my caps, you, you as well. Where, what, what did you think when you came in, first of all, training-wise, the language barrier, I know we've spoken a little bit about this, and the tactics that he wanted from, from us as a midfield four? Well, tactics-wise, everyone knew what, what was expected of them, didn't, didn't they? Especially mm. us as a midfield unit, we were... A rigid four, if you like, across the middle. Um, we were solid and compact with our back four, and we, uh, you know, we knew, we knew as wide men as well. We had to be up, down, up, down, up, down. We, you had to work your socks mm. off, and that's what he demanded. So, yeah, we knew what we was doing, and it seemed to work for us. Yeah. Um, what do you think of? Oh, sorry, before I go on to actually, <laughs> tell us a little bit about like I. I think as soon as I think of. You and there's actually a picture of I've, I've got very little memorabilia, unlike you, where this is actually very impressive. Your games room, um, <laughs> there's one in my mother's kitchen, and there's a picture of the French game um, in Paris, and we're, and we're all lined up. So as soon as I knew you were coming on, I was thinking, I wonder what his what his highlights might have been. I know some people might think of that as a low light, but where where would you put that in terms of your football and kind of memories? That particular game, yeah. It was obviously such a big game. It was huge, not not just for us and the Irish people, but worldwide, wasn't it? It was a massive, massive game because France at the time were in a bit of turmoil, if you like. There was a bit of revolt in there, and you know, would they get get through? And we absolutely give them a right game, didn't we? And mm. we were so unlucky on the night. I mean, to go there and to <clears throat> to take that team right to the wire. And when I thought we had them as well, it was 
it was a fantastic night. It was just in terms of the disappointment. I mean, there was tears at the end and stuff, weren't there? It was it was horrible. Mm. Uh, Liam, Keith just mentioned it there. Your uh, setup in the games room is pretty cool. Some of the jerseys there seem to be class. Talk us through what's on the, the left wall behind you and the Sunderland jersey behind you as well. Well, that's the, the Sunderland top that we won the league in when we went up. Um, I don't know if I can move this uh, connect thing because it might go a bit... Be careful, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so that's the Sunderland one. These yeah. over here, this is... Um, my first ever goal against South Africa. Wasn't a bad free kick, that. It wasn't bad, was it, mate? <laughs> <laughs> um, that one there, that's the um, the first time I was in a squad. That was under uh, Stan, actually, against Sweden. I don't know if you remember that game. We beat them 3-0 at home. Yeah. Um, so I just keep some stuff, Stoke stuff, and that fella there. Who's that? Who's he? I don't know. It was Anthony, is it? <laughs> um, but that's the one, mate. Yeah. Ah, oh, look, you you loved Ronaldo, didn't you? He's the man, isn't he, though? Just because you had the same haircut as him with those <laughs> silly streaks. Similar ability, though, I think he was. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> right, listen, I want to move on to the current Irish team. Um, what's your thoughts on them um, going into this new campaign? Optimism, I have to say, wouldn't exactly be high. What, what's your take on the current setup? Um, I think it's going to be tough. I think there's a, a bit of transition period, you know, with, with some players coming in and, and freshening things up. Um, I know there is a bit of optimism back back there with you guys, but you know, it, it would be nice if we could get off to a good start. That's for sure. Well, Roy Roy Keane's obviously a, a manager, someone you know quite well. Um, him and Martin have both been speaking about the lack of Premier League players available and, and being quite negative about it in terms of what he, what they've got at the disposal. What's your take on that, about the lack of Irish players playing at that level? Well, I think it's it's obviously going to be an issue. You know, you you want your players playing at the highest level and if, the, if there isn't that top quality of player that, that's playing week in, week out, you know, the best in one of the best leagues in the world, it, it's going to be an issue. So... I can understand what they're saying and, you know, maybe they're saying certain things to co cover their backs if it goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we read a few quotes this week about Seamus Coleman <coughs> talking about his his apprenticeship, if you like, um, when he went over to Everton and he was speaking about the difference now to, I think it was 10 years ago, Seamus went over there, um, how much it's changed. And our apprenticeship, of course, would have been a lot <laughs> a lot of years before that I went over in 96 I think you started at Mansfield mm -hmm. um, what, what's your thoughts on what he's saying about now the current breed being mollycoddled well I know I've got the same views on this sort of thing as you uh, mm. I think we're very much similar you know it was so different when when I was a, a YT at Mansfield we had to clean kit clean dressing rooms, make tea, clean boots. We weren't allowed to leave till five o'clock till the halls were mopped. Mm. Um, it was just a, a complete different breed of, of player. And it just, it, I don't know, it made me a stronger character, a stronger person. And I was able, then when I went into the first team, to be able to take things on the chin like a, a disappointing result where the mm. fans are on your case. And, and I don't know, certain things like that, you know, what build character and, Nowadays, money's thrown at kids at mm. 16, 17, 18. The hunger's gone before they've even got started. You know what I mean? I was on £150 a week with my first pro contract. Some of these lads are on five, ten grand a week before they've even kicked a yeah. ball. So it's going to be it's going to be the case, isn't it? You know, we'll yeah, know it's a bit, it's like. it is a big issue, isn't it? And it's, it's certainly something I'd like to get a little bit more into um, in the coming weeks. And look, time has obviously beaten us. You trying to sort out your Skype, unfortunately. The latest a little bit, but <laughs> you'll be back with us in the, in the coming weeks, I hope. Yeah, no problem, mate. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, I'll, I'll, before you want to go, Owen's got one for you. Just, just one last one. It's, it's one hell of a gaming headset you've got there, Liam. So I'd say you're a bit of a, a serious gamer. What are you playing? Is it, is it all FIFA? Uh, I don't play FIFA, actually. I don't like the football games. I, I used to have enough of that, obviously, playing and training. But I play Fortnite with my little boy who's 10 and, and Destiny and stuff. So a bit of a geek. You're you're a fan of the Fortnite celebrations creeping into football. Then do you play that? Do you? Uh, 
I don't. I don't play it now. It's uh, no time for it. It's too addictive. I was at a premiere last night, Liam, in Manchester with <laughs> the Man City crew. He was high life on the champagne and the. Ah, uh, was he? One of them is changed. He? He's changed. He's changed. <laughs> but listen, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch up with you again in the next few weeks. No problem. Thank Cheers, you. Thanks for having me. Good fella, Liam, and I meant that. Settled unbelievably well into the squad and was such a crucial player yeah. for that campaign going into um, to, trying to get to 2010 World Cup. Trap loved him. And he was a really popular player amongst the players. The way he played, and he was on up, down, up, down. He grafted and grafted. Yeah.